Welcome everybody. I hope that uh, you're all doing well. What what we generally do, I've had the pleasure of talking quite a bit with Bettina over the last few months when we do these iPet Ultimate um, sessions and then Sri and, and a few other folks. So I wanted to kind of shift things a little bit and start to do quite a bit more teaching so that that you're getting more bang for your buck out of this. But I think that um, if you're interested in energy techniques, this will be something that you can all do for, for all of your pets. Uh, and I've got a couple of likely suspects here, but what I'm gonna do first is drag this over. Um, so Hayo, I think will come and help us. And then Pepe is sitting next to me on the sofa, so he'll help us too. But uh, what I want to do first is kind of explain um, what I'm, what I'm going to attempt to teach you. And that is essentially, a, a, it's probably a very basic Reiki technique, but um, if you're at all energy adept, um, or even if you just have a great imagination, I think this is something that can end up helping you help your pets more. So the, the first thing we want to think about doing is there is, there is light, and energy above us all the time. And in fact, the Hopis believed that that was the way that they stayed in contact with the great spirit is through the soft spot or fontanelle in their brains on top of their heads. And that's what allowed great spirit to come through and, and help guide them and to let them know that they were doing all of the right things. So we, we all have this ability to bring energy from the divine or the universe or however, whatever words make you feel comfortable kind of thinking about this. And so the idea is to start to acknowledge the light above our heads and bring this down into our brains. And then the pineal gland, I think science didn't understand for very long and now for a long time. And now we're finally beginning to understand that actually probably it is the master gland and really directs all of the hormones. And so the next step is to bring this light down into the pineal gland and fill it up with light and energy. And then it sits somewhere right about in the center of your brain. So if it comes down here, you can kind of focus on it being somewhere in this neighborhood. And then once you feel like that's full of light, have it just project out of your third eye, which is roughly in this area. And what that will help you do is to, to open up your intuition, your perceptiveness, things of that nature, and uh, be able to get information that otherwise you may not have had available. So when we're able to do that, then we want to bring the light down a little further and into the throat chakra and clear it. And so that we can say all of the things that we need to say in our truth and then down into the heart chakra and fill that up uh, with light. And the, the other thing that's interesting about the heart is that we know that electromagnetically it transmits energy out 15 feet in all directions around us. And if, you, if you're familiar with the heart math people, they're the ones that did this research and, and lo and behold, it is, it is the truth. So fill your heart up with light and then bring your hands sort of sitting here across from each other and think about taking the light from your heart down your right hand and then transmitting that energy from your right hand to your left hand and then back up your arm into your heart again and setting up this, excuse me, Hayo, this circulation, if you will. So it's flowing all the way around us. And so once you've kind of got that sensation that that's going on, then the next step is going to be to to do one of two things. So Hayo may not permit this, but either placing your hand on or above your pet's head, your right hand, and then the left hand um, near their bottom. And then the idea is to circulate the light or the energy through the right hand, through your pet, and pick up any stagnant energy. So essentially what you're doing now is circulating energy through the seven chakras in your pet's body. So 
the crown chakra, the third eye, the throat chakra, the heart chakra, the solar plexus, the um, abdominal, the lower abdominal one, and then the root chakra. And so in doing this, you can help remove any energy that is stagnant or malicious isn't really a good word, but energy that does not serve your pet well. And you may find that some of this is not their stuff, but they're holding it. And all the, the thing that's important is that as the energy moves from your right hand to your left hand, you think about your left hand being this fiery hot um, sieve that when dark energy or energy that doesn't serve us hits it, it just... Whew, transmutes into nothing and you have cleaned that energy off and now it flows back up into you through your heart and then back out through your right side again. The thing to remember here is that it's not your energy, it is the universe of all that's abundant, the things that we can't, you know, the, the abundance that we can't possibly imagine. So I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit and Hayo may decide that that feels like too much. And so sometimes she'll get down and I'll just do it imagining that she is still here between my hands. And that seems to help. So while I'm doing this, what I want you to watch for is what she's doing. Is she relaxing? Is she being agitated? Um, she seems to be very happy to be the, the uh, model for today. Um, so anyway, so keep your eyes on her. See what she does. Does she yawn? Does she lick her lips a little bit and kind of relax and lay down? And this, what that means to me is that things are moving and she's feeling lighter and easier, if that makes some sense. So let's see how this works here. So breathing in, we'll move the energy down through the right arm. Breathing out, we'll move it back up the left arm into the heart. Now I can feel that flowing, so we'll see what Hayo thinks about all of this. And in the process of doing this, if you find your attention being drawn to one of the chakras. Just spend some time there and let the energy sort of dwell. And when you're ready, just let it move forward. Keep things circulating until you feel like you're complete and all that needs to have been done is done. And sometimes your pet will tell you that you're done when they get down, which she may want to do, although she seems to be enjoying this today.
And in fact, Mona came over to see if she could get some too. So what, what did you all see her do or not do? Or did you see any changes in what, what she was doing sitting here? I felt her kind of lick my fingers a minute. So feel, feel free to unmute yourself and, and we can talk about this a little bit more. Or relax. Yeah, so she went. <sighs> yeah, she just kind of really, she shut her eyes and she just relaxed. Yeah. And so she's, and, and I've been working with my friend Lisa Duthit, and this is, she has helped me tremendously with, with some of my own health issues. But one of the things that we found with Haya when we started working together is that Haya was still really grieving my mother. Um, and so this, is, this has helped her kind of pass this next phase of grief a little bit. And uh, interestingly, so Mona, you couldn't see, but she came over and sat next to me, which she rarely does, and did the same thing. <laughs> So this is this is all good stuff. So, and never in my life did I think I would ever be teaching people this kind of stuff. But it's just such a useful technique, and and you are all so in tune with your pets that I think that you can all learn how to do it. So how um, what I'm, part of what I'll do is write up a PDF so you can kind of go through the steps, but just practice it with yourself and just feeling the flow between right and left. Um, and this is the basis of a lot of things like Tai Chi, uh, Qigong, uh, you know, yoga, moving Kundalini energy, things of the circulation of energy. So that's what I got. So other comments? Who's, who's paleo? Yes. <laughs> my friend's daughter used my computer one time, so I've been paleo ever since. <laughs> 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 this is Webster and Albert's mom, but I have a question. Oh, so good. usually when they're sitting on my lap, they are used to being petted. So the minute I pick them up, that's what he's expecting. How do you change that to just get them to be calm with you? Well, and so what you could do is just this. Okay. Yeah. So just kind of transmute that and then generally just gradually rather slow things down a little bit uh, so that, you know, they're like, their their energy is starting to drop from being like oh goody mom's petting us to oh, feels really good and they're getting the endorphin release and if you focus on top of the head um, so that crown line so this is uh, governing vessel 26 ends here and it comes straight up the midline so if you pet this direction that sedates the energy um, and then it, and then that will help kind of calm them down and then be in a place where they can just sort of accept the energy. And if that's not working, again, what you can do is just kind of pet them, play with them, give them little loves and, and uh, do it remotely, so to speak. Even though they may be sitting here next to you on the sofa, you can imagine that Webster is between your hands and you're running the energy from crown down to the base chakra. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Of course. And Bettina, has, has Anya um, talked to you about any of these techniques at all? Our, our friend uh, Anya Gore's an amazing woman, um, and she has sort of yes, gained... Yes, she has. Good. Has she been telling yes. you to do something similar? Yes, she actually does it for me. Uh, she does all the energy healing with all my animals, including my parrots. Yeah, I remember you saying. So, yes, so this is some. Yeah, so this is something you can you can work on and and maybe be able to do, in, especially in an emergency situation. Right? Yeah, like if yeah, if, I definitely wanted to learn it. I, I actually uh, also um, animal communication. I, I've been taking classes for that too. Right on, right on, and I'm I'm learning that slowly as well. Um, so it's just amazing kind of what's out there but but yeah. for those of you that don't know Anya she is she is a remarkable woman um, and has learned uh, Reiki has learned uh, animal communication and and I'm so sorry Bettina I keep forgetting the the uh, trainer she's is not the right word 
She is a um, she is a partnership lifestyle coach for the Brilliant Partners Academy. Yes, and so the idea there is instead of training your dog, you're actually actually training yourself to be a good leader for your dog and let you know getting your dog to acquiesce. And I'm sure that's a very bastardized version of it, but that's kind of the the gist of it. So use the animal communication part. How how do I use it? I can use it. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. That's right, Susan. I'm communicating with some of my pets, like Marty. He will very. He tells me a lot, but my other ones not so much. And I've been trying to study it as well. But I'd love to get in touch with Anya. I will. Uh, we will post her information in the uh, uh, iPets Ally group so that you'll have access there. But. She is delightful. And, and it seems like, too, our own pets, that is the more difficult situation to do good communication because it's difficult to be objective because some of what they're, they, ha they are experiencing is because of our energy and they're trying to blunt that for us. And they may not want to, they're, they're more gracious than we are and they may not want to tell us about that directly. And so sometimes that's where working with somebody else with your own pets that aren't speaking uh, can be extremely helpful. Does that make any sense to you, Susan? Definitely, because I have worked with um, a couple animal communicators with Marty because he won't drink out of a bowl right now. So okay. we found out why, and we both came to the same realization at the same time. He's from a puppy mill, and he didn't like his puppy mill tag clinking on the metal bowl. Yeah. Wow. And, and this is the thing. I mean, this little girl came out of that situation, too, and there are still times where she'll be fine, and then all of a sudden something really random will just totally freak her out. And this is three years after being kind of sprung from jail, if you will. But that makes yeah, total Marty's sense. Marty's going on nine. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, you can imagine we, we, I liken that situation to, um, remember those three women that were found in that dude's shed? Yes. Yeah. I mean, so like all of a sudden, boom, you're free, but boom, you also now have to figure out how to deal with the world. And sometimes that's where the PTSD of it gets the better of you every now and again, even though that's, you know, you're trying, you, you know, you're free, you know, you're safe, but still it can get scary. So yeah. Wow. Poor Marty. So that's, that's what I wanted to teach you all today. Um, is there any other questions about that in particular? And again, I'll, I'll put together a PDF that kind of jumps through things step by step um, so that you can practice this on your own. And what I would do first is get really good at just feeling that flow from right hand to left hand. Um, and even with your own energy, like if you're feeling something sad, something... Um, just unhappy that's weighing in your heart, literally, you can clean your own energy by doing that. You know, just imagine this. I always think of, uh, for some reason, a concrete truck mixer that's got this fine mesh screen so that the concrete that goes through is really nice and smooth and even, and it cleans out all the garbage that would make the concrete uneven and unstable and not strong. So just think of it as like this massive... Uh, incinerator to take out all of the heavy dark energy before it comes back in your body so that each circulation it's getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner until it's completely clean. Do you find that you have to be in the right state of mind in order to to do this? Like it, it has mind? yes it has definitely been a long process because much of this much of the starting is simply being able to quiet your mind down for a couple of minutes. So, you know, and this gets kind of back to a meditation practice, but um, it's very easy to do. Um, and so we think of meditation being having to take, you know, hours and things of that nature. But if you follow Wim Hof at all, um, he is been a godsend to me the last few months 
uh, and he's got a free app that will actually teach you how to do this, what he calls a four minute meditation. And essentially what he is teaching people is to take really deep breaths, you know, and you're taking like 30 or 40 of them. And really all you have time to think about is taking the breaths uh, and, and taking them in deeply, feeling up your chest, your abdomen, and he says his head, your head. So you're taking oxygen all the way through your tissues. And then he, uh, after that 30 or 40 breaths, which will take about two minutes, then he, he will ask you to hold your breath. And um, so I've been doing this since October. And to start with, I could hold my breath for about 30 seconds, meaning not breathing. Um, but now I'm up to like three minutes, three minutes and 15 seconds when, when that's doable. So that's a great way to do a couple of things. One is to shut off um, your vagus nerve and downregulate that anxiety that we kind of all kind of walk, walk around with and don't realize often. And in doing that, that lets your whole uh, brain just calm down and it drops you back into a low sympathetic tone. And so from there, um, what you can start doing then is working, imagine the light coming through your crown chakra and coming through. So this is something that some of it you just have to trust that you actually can do it and just go through the motions for a little bit. But the other thing is, is that it does take a bit of practice to go from uh, bringing the light in, getting it into your amygdala, passing it through your third eye to open up your intuition so that you can kind of process what you're feeling, and then bringing it down into your heart. So there are tons and tons and tons of people that have guided meditations out there. Um, I'll put the one, the one I started learning this with was Lisa's morning meditation, so I'll put a link to that as well. But those would be really great tools to start to bring you down into a calm state where you can just transmit this energy and let it flow. But it, I think that will help. It will serve you tremendously in life in general and, and also your pets. What else can I answer for y'all? See, now I've got enough energy flowing. I'm getting warm again. <laughs> so the other part of what we generally do on these sessions is answer any questions I can about pets and help kind of guide you into what next steps might be. So um, fire away with that and any questions you might have about your guys and I'll see what I can do to help you with them. This is Christina. This is Marty. Since no one else is talking, I just wanted to thank you. One time I did a consultation and I asked you at the end, what's one of the best things I could do for them? And you told me to like be with them for just three minutes a day. Yes. You know, just be with them. And so I've really taken that to heart. And every night, like I grab one or the other and curl up and I'm just with them. And it's really been a really sweet thing that we do. Oh, well, that's awesome. But I mean, Chris, if you're already there, then you've, you've gotten yourself chilled out enough to start processing <laughs> this. So Working that's, so that, <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, that's, if, if you can do that and just sit there and be with them for three minutes, then that's the first step into you've already calmed your brain down and chilled your amygdala down and gotten yourself back into a low, uh, low tone, uh, sympathetic tone. So you're more than 50% of the way there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I might only be chill those three minutes, but I'm working. <laughs> hey, three minutes out of out of 24 hours is better than zero. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> There's so many distractions in the world. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I have Mr. Marty on my lap right now. Marty, look at the camera. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah. man, that's embarrassing, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, He's my special, special boy. I remember you talking about him. So he's he's been around the block for quite some time, but uh, he's yes. still has some issues. Yeah. Um, but he was fine with the water bowl. Or we had issues with the water bowl at first, 
Then he got used to drinking out of the water bowl. Now he doesn't want to drink out of the water bowl. Only wants to drink out of my hands. And I just don't know what set it off. Well, now Abner, I think you, you, I think I remember seeing something about he's lost his vision totally. Is that correct? He's losing his vision. He has very limited eyesight right now. So did this start up with Marty about that time? Um, that things started going south for Abner or no? Yeah, probably about the same time. So is Abner, Mar uh, is Marty Abner's guide dog? No. Abner kind of stays to himself. Okay. Um, he's always done that. He's probably, he's more of my baby. He just sticks with me. And every once in a while, I'll, he'll come and play with the other dogs. But basically, he stays to himself. He doesn't even want to be in bed with me like the other babies. So he's pretty aloof. So I, there's something about Abner, and again, this is an impression, so right or wrong, what you might do is just reassure him that you still love him very much and that Abner is, you know, he's having some problems, but he's, he's going to be okay um, and see if that helps at all. And that, you know, he doesn't need to be afraid of, of the old thing. So basically he's recycling into the past and picking up that PTSD and getting back into that loop. Does that make any sense? Yeah, because, um, Billy, be quiet. Marty, Abner, and my Patrick all came from the same puppy mouth. Yeah. But they were all pretty much rescued within the same two months. Was that, because you're in South Carolina, aren't you, Susan? Am yes. I remembering that? And it was that from that woman in Florence? By chance, that pu was that the puppy mill they came out. No, of? this one. These were in Missouri. <laughs> oh, you had to go abroad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ohio came out of the. This is just the most incredible story. This woman has been arrested finally, and finally, it's a felony in South Carolina. But she had had her house cleaned out two previous times to this last arrest and why you know the first time they gave her a breeding pair back and it's like really and so this Hyo's lot of dogs and there were something like 120 of them in there were the last of this this woman in Florence so thank god that and she actually was convicted of felony uh, animal abuse charges which thank is, god which is amazing i mean south carolina actually Oh, I know. We're real lenient here. Yeah, but that, that was like she was the, uh, she was the uh, poster child for what not to do. Uh, and, and to their credit, they actually did get her some mental health uh, assist, assistance as well, because unfortunately this is partly an OCD disorder, but it's just like, yeah. yeah. This puppy mill was just like crates outside and cages that were too small for the babies yeah so that's, that's just nuts back issues, yeah issues well see see tr try that out susan and see if that helps your, your buddy marty but i think he got stuck back into the ptsd loop because things shifted in the house yeah i'll try that okay cool tried so much with him <laughs> right on Dr. Ruth, that brings up another question. So, you know, as our pets age, you know, I'm looking towards the next one. And I've had a mix of those that I've gotten um, a, a little bit older, but I knew the breeder versus those that I've gotten from the shelter. And, uh, you know, and I've gotten friends who've adopted from the shelter only to find out after the dog settles in that it's horribly reactive. They can't really do a whole lot with it. They've gone to, you know, all these things. And so for the first time in my life, I'm actually thinking about getting a puppy because I can find a really good breeder who intentionally bred this dog to the specifications. I know what size it will be, you know, I've seen all the litters, but yet you feel this kind of moral shaming that how dare you buy a dog with great breeding and personality when you should be adopting, you know, somebody else's essential mistake, you know? And I, <laughs> you know, do you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm probably not phrasing it greatly, but, um, 
you know, how do you, do you consult people? Like, is it, do I feel okay? I feel okay buying a dog that I think was intentionally bred and bred well and raised well and won't have, won't be neutered at eight weeks old and won't have a ton of vaccines by the time. But it, it's, it's a tough thing. And there, there are a lot of moral complications around that. So one, and, and to be honest too, I mean, I've seen, I've seen people get dogs from breeders and everything checked out. And then that puppy is still a shit show. If you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> it's but, sick. Yeah, they're sick. They're, you know, because so it's they they call breeders call it line breeding, but essentially what it is is incest. <laughs> um, yep. You know, they're just they're too closely bred. Their little brains are just not, you know, they just didn't come out of the box right. So you can see it both ways, and I think, you know, one one way is to look at working with a rescue breed specific rescue group that does um, does have a slower intake to outflow process, meaning that they're going into a foster home where that foster home is assessing them for behavioral issues that they actually know what they're doing. They're not setting them up for disaster. So unfortunately, a lot of people will do foster care, but if they're not cognizant of what you know, what dogs like Hayo and Marty may have needed, um, they can turn that dog, they can shut them down. And then you're in the same boat that you just described. The dog gets to your home, they settle in, they start to relax and they're like awful. It's just crazy. They're, you know, they're either reactive to people or animals or both. And then you've got this massive problem on your hands. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way that, that I, the last... <laughs> The last time that I we adopted dogs, which were our Brittany Spaniel and um, uh, English Setter, they went through this process so that I had some idea what what I was getting at the end of the day. Um, now, Hayo, you know, lived with my mom for three years. We had no idea what she was going to be like, but thankfully, she's she's been just just an amazing dog and she does occasionally cycle back into her PTSD stuff and so we have to work with her on that but that's it's a tough call I mean because we want our pets to be our companions now Bettina went through that whole crazy show with Murphy um, and has done amazing stuff and that's part of how you and Anya met with the um, right. Right, so I'll let you explain a little bit about what your, your experience had been, Bettina. Well, it wasn't just Murphy. Um, you know, we, we adopted a, after our golden retriever, Luca, passed away. He had cancer. We adopted a dog with a heart condition. Yeah. And he was so wild that after six weeks with him in our home, we decided to get another dog for him because he was just out of control. So that's how we ended up finding Bear through the same wow. rescue. And Bear was six months at the time and him and Moose, they just hit it off. It was a match made in heaven and they got along so well that we didn't really have any more issues. They were all gone. It was like a total change. Moose and him were playing. They didn't bother my parents anymore. They stopped chewing the house down. <laughs> it was like it was like great yeah well and then and then um now moose moose had the heart condition so after about two months of him and bear together his heart got weaker and he needed to rest more so moose was back on us again yeah. that's how we ended up with mary <laughs> so we got the third dog it was really it was really crazy now mary was older she was really easy going um she was a great Pyrenees and Bear was a great Pyrenees Anatolian Shepherd mix and Moose was a lab Great Dane Boxer mix. So that's how we ended up with those three and they were all in foster homes but I have to say none of the description that we got from the foster homes actually matched our dogs. <laughs> so, and that happens. <laughs> yep, that really happened. And um, you know, Moose Moose even came from uh, from the trainer of the rescue, and um, yeah, he was a total different dog when he was here. 
And Bear, his reactivity started when he was a year old. So about six months after we had him, he started reacting to anything that was moving by. Wow. Cars, bicycles, strollers, um, my daycare children. I mean, you name it. Yeah. He reacted to everything. And not mean or anything, just reactive. So we couldn't walk him anymore. He was like 120 pounds. And when he saw a car, uh, he went off and with me on the leash. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he pulled me in front of a car at Christmas time. And yeah, that was really bad. Yeah. And icy. Yeah. That... And, then, and then, then came Murphy. Yeah, after Moose passed away, Moose, we only had Moose for six months and his heart went out. And um, that's how we ended up with Murphy. And Murphy, the same thing. When we first got him, he he was actually, he was very chewy. He was about eight months. Um, he was deaf, chewy. But other than that, a really good dog. And then one day we took him swimming. And afterwards, we went to the park to dry him off. And when we came home, he took a nap. And when he woke up, he was a different dog. <laughs> He was literally dancing on top of our table, um, took a drywall <laughs> down, ate our wood floor, um, shadow chasing. Um, he was put on medication. Um, on the second day of the medication, he started resource guarding. And from that day on, his health went downhill. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, and that's the thing. It's so frustrating. And I think a lot of it is, you know, some of it you can see coming and some of it you really can't. So, Chris, I don't know that that helped you answer your question um, other than to say that you have to do what you think is best for you and your family. And if that's if that's getting a puppy, then that's that's OK. Um, but, but we I, had good news. We had yeah. good news. Though. Yeah. They all, they're all doing great today. Um, like I said, we, we, uh, we joined um, the Brilliant Partner Academy. We have all our protocols. We started cooking. We took them off kibble. We took them off chemicals. We detoxed, detoxed, and detoxed. And today they're all doing great. Yeah. And I mean, Bettina has done a terrific amount of work. And, um, and I think you used the, you were the person that told me about the Assisi loop for yes. behavioral issues. And that's been a yes. real game changer for you. Calming loop for, yeah. for Murphy and yeah. all the detoxing because also um, through the animal communication, we learned um, how Murphy grew up and that has helped. Anya has been amazing with that. And she's been doing the energy healing for him and just learning about their past and checking the microbiomes, doing the fur analysis, all came together. Yeah. It's been three years and everything is finally coming together, which is amazing. Yeah. Add in something? Yeah. Um, I'm a foster parent. I work with a lot of rescues. I fostered 52 dogs so far. Um, and the best rescues, and they have puppies, are the ones who do the foster parents, the foster parenting where the foster can actually observe the behavior and everything. And they also do background checks and they do home checks. Yes. On every potential Everyone who wanted to adopt one of my fosters, I got to interview personally and to see if they would fit right. And then there was a home check. And I usually had them probably a good, sometimes up to a year, three, three months to a year sometimes to observe their behavior. And they, rescues have a lot of puppies. They do. Oh. They do. And so my neighbor did that and they wanted maybe a 40 pound dog. So they went and got a lab mix. They now have an 80 pound dog. Yeah, that's the trouble. This is the problem, right? Yeah, so exactly. Specific. Like I have already replaced the dog door once when I had a foster dog who failed and he's still here, bless his heart. Um, so <laughs> I was like, I cannot replace the dog door again, you know, for if I get an 80 pounder. So understood. Um, so, and that's the thing, you, you know, the best thing I can tell you is just again, trust your instincts okay. and yeah. do what you believe is going to be best for you, for your family, 
and right. for you know whoever is there when this other dog comes into your family. Thankfully, I've I, you know I know not to buy it from the store or the internet. I've gone to the breeder. I've seen her dogs. I've you know I've met her dogs hiking on the trails. They all seem well bred and well temperamented. At least the ones I've met. Um, because whenever I see that breed, I'm like, who is your breeder? Right. Yeah. Because you you've got you've got Westies. Am I right? One, correct? Yeah, that's the older one who's, yeah, I'm looking. And at first I wanted a, a Lagoto, mm. um, but uh, a rarer breed and harder to come by. So I think I just might do a Westie again. So. Yeah. And that's, and that's a tough breed because they have, they're sort of got, they've got an inbred temperament issue um, for, because of more unscrupulous breeders. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's where, if that's the breed you want to stick with, that's where it makes sense. Um, yeah. And then, you know, who knows when Mona departs with us, um, we'll have Hayo and Pepe, and then God knows what will happen six or eight years down the road, who will walk into our lives. So we'll see. What else can I answer for y'all? Wow, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, I think this is it. We're we we pretty much all grew up in an era of somebody else being the expert and not trusting ourselves and i think that's part of what's starting to change in the world is that people are finding that yeah, yeah i really can rely on myself and rely on my instincts so in doing this that's part of why i wanted to introduce this kind of energy flow to you because it helps you develop your instincts about what's going on, not only with yourself, but with your pets. And in doing that, then that makes you a better advocate for your pets. If you, you know, you can get the idea that something is not right um, and you can, maybe you can localize it to something in the heart or in the belly, then if your veterinarian sort of says, well, looks okay, then you can say, well, something's not right. And I think there's something going on in the abdomen that may help point them in the direction that, that needs to be addressed. And, and I don't say that to demean my colleagues, although sometimes I do, but there, I, I am frankly grateful to not be in clinical practice at this moment with COVID because from everything I've been hearing from my friends still in practice and the technicians I worked with, it has just been a nightmare for everybody and you the pet owner are not being served the pets are not being served the staff is over stretched i mean certainly it doesn't compare to the human healthcare workers but good lord um it is just it's just been a nightmare so sometimes you have to push for the next step because uh that compassion fatigue for for veterinary uh medical workers is is real and it is, I mean, I saw a story about a, a human nurse that got her COVID vaccine, her first vaccine, and broke into tears with the realization that this nightmare may be over soon. I just, I mean, whew, God help them and God bless them too. Is there anything we can do to make their lives easier? I mean, do they appreciate, I'm, you know, any sort of or a gift or just a note or, you know, what? Yeah, what is, tell them, them, share the love. I mean, so, you know, tell them, tell them you appreciate them, send them a card, send them, a, I mean, because that's something that's right when you get a card from somebody that says thanks and it's a heartfelt note or even a heartfelt email, that brightens their day because they're getting emails 24 7 of, why can't I get an appointment? La, 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 la. So to get that little bright, sunshiny, I can guarantee you they'll print that sucker out and put it right in the middle of where everybody can see it because they need that they need that good vibe energy you know take them some some cookies or some probably better take them a veggie tray <laughs> uh, but you know because they're just i mean it is uh it's not fun i cannot imagine but yeah anything you can do to lighten them up a little bit is good all right i know you're you said veggie tray but i went to my local bakery that makes hand baked stuff that's just phenomenal and I got enough to make two huge trays and then I attached pictures of my dogs on the trays after I wrapped it in cellophane and, and with a card and sent it to them. 
Yeah, and that's perfect. I mean, that's that's just you took the effort to make something special for them, to you know put pictures of your dogs, and it, that is so genuine. You you were able to genuinely share your love for what they do for your pets, and that's perfect because God knows they need it right now. And I also um I don't know um I'm following the animal um welfare summit. Uh, the Animal Wellness Summit, yeah, that just yeah. launched, I think, today. And so I've been attending those classes, and they're amazing. One of them was about poison. Are you poisoning your pet? And it's like, oh my God, I am. With there's the there's some really excellent speakers there, and there's interestingly a lot of the talks now are more approaching the emotional and and spiritual realm for lack of a better description about how we connect with our pets. I saw there were several of them about end of life care and things to expect, but, but you're right. I mean, they're great. And I think my, my talk is on the 28th or something like that, but it's, you know, but I sent a talk over about, about SIBO, but there, it's a great source of re, a great resource. And then the other thing that's coming up, if you're not familiar with it, is Dog Care on Air. Um, and I think that's February 6th or something like this. But that's another great resource. There is a lot more uh, conventional type speakers, but if you're having problems with a specific disease condition, it's a great place to get some up-to-date information about that. <laughs> just if that makes sense yeah I mean, yeah yeah because that's a yeah but at any rate that, that's two great resources and i think animal wellness summit goes through february 2nd i think that's correct and then i think this one dog care and air starts the sixth but yeah there's tons of great info out there did i miss the cbd special no, we uh, so talk about scheduling error. That's actually going to be tomorrow morning. We realized, okay. oh, this is uh, inauguration day, <laughs> so we rescheduled for this week. Yeah, so yeah, but we'll, I'll be talking with Angela. That. Yeah, I'll be talking with Angela tomorrow. And Angela Artelino is the um, founder and CEO of uh, CBD Dog Health, and she is one of the best educated people, cannabis educated people I know of. And she also has a veterinarian, Zach, Dr. Zach, that's come on board, that's expanding their knowledge, but they're really, they're good folks. They actually were sharing, she's her, one of her own dogs has osteosarcoma uh, for, she's now eight months post-diagnosis, which is pretty, pretty darn remarkable. And so she was sharing me their, their protocol, um, but they are good folks. I mean, they're, they're a business making excellent products, but their, their main drive is to, is to educate people about how to use CBD. And, um, and they also have quite a bit of information on, on THC as well. Uh, but that's just been, she, they've just been wonderful to work with. And they helped bring my level of understanding up dramatically and very quickly. I can't wait for it. I, I'm excited too. It's going to be a fun, fun time tomorrow. Cool. Anything else I can help you ladies with this evening? Thank you. You are welcome. So we'll, uh, I'll get this recording up and I'll get you a PDF. And then the two links I mentioned, the Wim Hof app, and then uh, Lisa Duthit's morning meditation to kind of get some more ideas for you about how to get energy flowing. So thanks for coming on this evening. Um, really enjoyed it as always. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank with, you. With pleasure. Night. Mm -hmm.